Hey, welcome everybody, Tucson Acres here. If you're just getting into uh, collecting your own firewood, I put together a list of the essentials that I find that I use every time I go out or I need more often than not. And then I've got uh, another selection of stuff, things I carry with me all the time, things that are nice or should haves, and then things that are nice to haves, more luxury. I got a couple items that are, uh, I would almost say gimmicks, but not quite. I'm sure they have their place. I, it's just not for me. Um, and for you seasoned guys out there, I'd appreciate it if you could throw in the comments, you know, if, if you find anything that you have that you use all the time or are nice to haves or essentials out there that's not covered here, uh, it would definitely help out. All right, here we go. All right, so number one, obviously, your saw, right? Uh, this is an Echo CS400. It's on the small end. It uses a low pro chain, uh, 3 8 pitch, you know, but for me, it gets the job done. Um, if you can, if you have the means, definitely have, I, I carry two saws now. I've got a bigger saw. Um, that's not my go-to saw unless I'm bucking bigger stuff, uh, but it definitely has its place. And there's nothing more frustrating than, you know, getting your bar stuck in something because you weren't paying attention and you don't have another saw. And that will bring us to number two is an ax. You don't need nothing fancy. Uh, there's not even a name brand on this one. Uh, it actually came with a house I bought at one point way in the back, uh, you know, way in the past. Um, but, you, you know, you get your saw stuck, you know, manual labor, but at least you can get yourself out or taking down limbs or you know, cutting roots, anything like that. This is actually the saw I keep in my tractor and it, it gets used all the time. I have to sharpen it every other time I use it because I'm, you know, smacking roots in the ground and hitting rocks. Um, the next is a hatchet of some sort, all right? I can't tell you how many times I need a hatchet, whether it's just pounding in uh, wedges or again, roots or small limbs. You know, I don't wanna have to carry the big one if I'm just clearing a, sl a small path, but having a couple blades, I would say a hatchet and an ax are definitely essentials. I use them a lot. Um, it, it's one of those things that you might not use every time you're out, but when you need it, you have to have it, all right? So I would definitely recommend one of those. Uh, that we talked about the if, if you're felling I'm not saying it you know a lot on state land you're only allowed to take down uh, timber and or dead and down so that's one of those things where you don't have to have um, wedges felling wedges uh, I use them I cut on my own property I can take down whatever I want but I still only take standing dead and I use wedges all the time I would highly recommend spending the extra few bucks per wedge to get higher quality this is a Forrester brand, this orange one here, and you can see how chipped up it is. And my other one's the same way, where it just gets completely boogered up. Where these uh, red and white ones, I don't even know the brand of these, to tell you the truth. They hold their edges. That's a lot better quality plastic or poly or whatever it is. This is an Oregon one. I keep different sizes. You know, I, I never know what I'm working on. So that's definitely a must if you're felling. Uh, you know, to make sure that your tree goes in a certain direction and make sure your bar doesn't get pinched. Um, you definitely need those. There's a million videos out there on how to use wedges, how to fell. Uh, Buck and Billy Ray Riley, or no, Buck and Billy Ray, I think is his name, his channel. Fantastic. He, he is amazing. I'm not a pro. I just do what I need to do to get wood for my, you know, to heat my house and my barn. Uh, next, tools for the saw itself. I, I took one, uh, I, I hate the little tools that come with these things, but uh, took a Craftsman screwdriver and I ground down the edges a little bit so that it was smoother, uh, thinner rather, so that it would fit in the, uh, the ports, uh, the, the high-low adjusting ports. If you're not competent or comfortable doing that, don't, but uh, that's a tool I keep with me. A flat file and a round file for each saw that I'm carrying. Well, at least a round file for each saw that I'm carrying. And remember, this is just the bare minimum that you should be taking. Uh, I'm gonna go into the extra stuff that I take here in a second. Um, so yeah, definitely those. I always have a, a multi-tool of some sort. This is a, a Swiss tool um, or Swiss something or other. It's a Victor Victorinox. To me, this is the handiest one. It's, it's not a full needle nose, but it's not blunt either. Um, and all the tools are accessible on the outside. So that's the one I carry with me. I don't get dressed without it, all right? So that's always with me. If I need pliers or a file or a knife or any of that stuff, it's with me. And I use it quite a bit, to tell you the truth. Um, obviously, gas and oil. You're gonna need gas, your, your two-stroke mixed gas and bar oil. And I carried it just like this for years, 
almost 10 years to tell you the truth. We'll talk about a combi can here in a minute. Um, glasses, uh, this is again, bare minimum. I, I like these Milwaukee's. I've been through dozens of different brands of glasses. These Milwaukee's are my favorite now. Um, you know, scratch resistant, fog proof, or not fog, fog proof, but fog resistant. And uh, if you wash them in soap and water, like my other video, they last a long time. Now, if you're cutting out in the middle of summer, they're gonna get foggy, no doubt about it. You're gonna have to cool down, take breaks, whatever. I've had it happen a million times. Uh, but you still should be wearing glasses. A lot of guys don't. Hey, that's fine. That's up to you. I like my eyes. I like my eyesight. I'm 44. I would argue that I'm 20, 20, but I, I have to hold my watch out to here now to see. Um, gloves, you don't have to wear gloves, but I think it's essential for myself. You know, I don't want to be worrying about uh, getting little rough cuts and crap like that on my fingers. Call me baby fingers, whatever. I don't care. I wear gloves. These are mechanics. I, uh, I've been through more than a dozen different brands and types of gloves. And these mecha uh, Mechanics brand driver gloves, about 20 to 25 bucks a pair, and they are phenomenal for working with the saw. Now, if you're chucking lumber, chucking wood, you're gonna wear them out, you know, especially already split stuff that's kind of rough, you, you'll wear them out pretty quick. This one's already got a hole. So I try not to use them for that. I have a heavier leather pair for that, but these give you great feel, fantastic with the saw. Um, for me, that's a must. All right. Now, if you're splitting your own wood as well, which that's kind of the whole point, this Fisker X27, I believe is the, uh, the model of it, uh, I believe is the best overall, especially bang for your buck, uh, splitting ax. You can get a maul or an ax. This thing though, it's got the reach, the, the energy, and it really does have the profile. And this is by far my favorite. There's a lot of people that love it. You know, a lot of people like to, but it's, it's affordable, but a lot of people like to pay the extra and that's fine. There's a lot of high-end brands out there. You can pay 100, 200 bucks for a splitting ax. And you know, if that's your thing, go for it. Uh, I like the, the quality and, the, and what I get out of that saw for the cost. So this right here is what I would say is the bare, bare minimum to collect and process your own firewood. Uh, um, let me show you what I carry in the bag. All right, so I didn't carry a bag. That's why none of this is uh, included in the must have section, uh, but I do now. And this is all the crap that goes along with it. Obviously I carry an extra saw and that doesn't go in the bag. Uh, but you know, I carry a big saw and a little saw. The little saw is my go-to for probably at least 75% of what I'm doing. All right, so all of my wedges, they hang out in the bag. Then I have extra files, one for each, okay? Uh, at least an extra file for each side. So that's a low pro 3 8 This is a 3 8 uh, standard. Carry a couple extras, a couple extra um, grips, hand, hand uh, grips. All right. Extra chains. I carry at least one, if not two extra. Like these are both the low pro chains. For the smaller saw, I carry two of those. I got some other ones for the big saw over there. Extra scrunches, all right? And then I, I know that looks like a lot, but I have different size scrunches, lengths, and then I have the torques because these uh, Echoes have Torx heads on them, so I carry that. I carry a staple gun just because I put up no trespassing signs occasionally. I carry grease for the bar, and uh, this is more bar grease. Then extra bar nuts. Definitely gonna have a crappy day if you gotta come all the way back home because one of your bar knots gets stripped out out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we'll talk about this guy here in a few minutes with the nice to have stuff. And then I keep a, uh, a bar cleaner tool, which is this funky looking little thing here. And you just put it in the bar and it, it drags along and pulls all the uh, sawdust mixed with uh, oil, that crud right out of the bar. I carry an extra hatchet and uh, I do have another hatchet over there that I carry and then a couple rags. So that's, that's what's in the bag normally along with the tools that are already out there. All right, so now let's talk about the should have items, all right? Uh, personal protective gear, all right? Safety stuff. Chaps, all right? I, I wear Duluth uh, fire hose pants. That's my go-to work pants now and I love them. And I'll tell you what, they've actually protected my leg. I, I went to step, I was cutting and cutting and cutting, limbing a tree, and I, I, 
I don't usually put the brake on after every cut and I picked this up. I'm, you know, right-handed, so I'm holding it like this. I swing the saw over and I picked my leg up to step over something and that saw blade, while it was still spinning down, caught my pants and holy crap, I, I freaked out for a second. Those Duluth fire hose pants actually stopped the bar. It did rip a hole in the pants, um, but my long johns underneath weren't even, not one thread was pulled. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking for a new work pant, uh, the, the, uh, the Duluths are fantastic, okay? Anyway, so, you know, chaps are, are really, really good. If you're falling, then you really should be wearing a helmet. Now, this is a Oregon brand. Um, it's got the flip down earmuffs. This part up here though, this um, shield, face shield, uh, you don't need to wear safety glasses with that. this. It's a screen, you can see through it, but the, the beauty of it uh, over glasses is that it won't fog, all right? And that is fantastic. So uh, when I'm using my big saw, the, the, it's got a muffler mod, it is loud. I, I'm already hard of hearing from my military experience. So it, 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 I, I will run with the earmuffs when I'm using the bigger saw, or at least earplugs if I'm not wearing a helmet. Uh, but the, the earmuffs, the helmet, and the, the screen when you're out work, if, working by yourself and falling. Now, nobody can stop you if you're on your own property falling and nobody else is out there, right? They, they, nobody can enforce that. Um, but I've had some close calls and I'll tell you, it's freaky, right? And, and obviously there's been lots and lots of accidents with that scenario even in you know commercial private it doesn't matter it, you know a branch comes flying down from 50 feet up it's gonna hurt i don't care if it's just a little half inch branch all right so definitely a should have and i do use this quite often i don't use it always you know smaller you know six inch trees that are only 20 feet tall no i don't use this uh, but the bigger stuff, you know, 24 inch trunks that are 70 feet tall with dead limbs everywhere. Yeah, better believe it. Uh, other nice to have stuff when I'm out there in the woods, I carry a machete. This is just a Gerber. They're not too expensive. And I carry a smaller hatchet. These actually stay in my quad. Um, and if I'm not using the quad to go out felling, I yank them out of the quad and carry them with me because they're really handy. If I'm going through a tight bushy area to get to a dead tree, this hatchet is so much nicer. All right. So I'm sorry, uh, machete. It's, it's nothing crazy. I keep it sharp and it just, it's handy. It's really handy. It's not a must have. You can work your way through, you know, brush and vines and all that crap. I live down in Florida. The vines down there are so bad. That's actually when I started carrying a machete. Uh, I was, you know, hunting down there and the vines down in Florida are just, you know, prickly, thorny and everywhere and they suck so bad. So if you're down there, obviously you probably already have one. Uh, but, you know, carrying a machete and a smaller hatchet for little jobs, very, very handy. Uh, the next nice to thing have, uh, the next nice to have thing is a hookeroon or a pickeroon. Uh, I, I went with a hookeroon and a 36 inch just because it, you know, it's perfect to the ground length for my height. You know, d figure out what length you need. You can order it. Um, this this Oregon one, the, this one's kind of pricey. I think it was about 130 bucks, something like that. Now that was a couple years ago, so who knows now? But I've seen another one. I think I've seen a steel one that is literally identical. All right. So if you like the orange, you can get the orange. It doesn't matter. Um, there's, but like I said, there's a whole bunch of different brands and styles. This one is super light and you know super easy to flop around and swing. And I never thought I'd need or like something like this. I'm 44 now, uh, and I'll tell you what, bending over isn't getting any easier. So being able to just latch onto a log and drag it to a more convenient place to cut up or buck is super, super handy. Um, you, you'll thank me later, I promise, after getting a hookeroon or a pickeroon. The, the difference, in case you don't know, a hookeroon has this little hook right here. Whereas a picaroon is a little bit, it's usually a little stubbier and more of a straight hook. So this kind of digs in a little bit more. This particular one's got this grip right here, this hook in the handle. And that's honestly really handy, but it does, you know, when I'm dragging, you know, 400 pound logs off the trailer and then it sticks with it, it pulls me with it. So that's something you got to watch out for if you get this style, or you can get more like a, an ax handle style that doesn't have that. They're just harder to hang on to. Uh, next, uh, this one, I, I'm debating whether I should even mention it, but this is a steel 
combi uh, uh, file, all right, combo file, and it does both the rakers and your, your chain teeth at the same time. And at first, I really, really liked it. And I, I still do really like it. The problem is that steel and their <clears throat> proprietary assholeness you know, made these files a 3 16 file instead of 7 30 seconds, which 7 30 seconds is your standard file across the board for a 3 8 chain. So by using a 3 16 it's just ever so slightly smaller and it kind of creates this little hook in your tooth, the, the chain tooth. And I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, it's totally up to you. I plan on doing a video. If you'd like to see that, um, you know, throw it down in the comments but I'm planning on doing a whole bunch of different types of sharpening techniques. It is super handy, don't get me wrong. It's, it's easy to use, it has all the guides to go in the right direction, hits your rakers, everything in one shot. Um, I really liked it. I actually used one for the, the, my low pro chain uh, with a, was it a 530 seconds file on it? I think is what it is. And it's fantastic. It's, it's super easy to, to pop the files out. You just pop the end open, the files fall right out. You can replace the files. So, and that's actually when I found out that it's not the same because I went to replace the files. They just weren't cutting right anymore. And I tried to put a 730 seconds in there and it wouldn't fit. It never even crossed my mind to check the size of the file. I just figured it, assumed it was the same as every other standard 3 8 chain. It's not. Uh, the next nice to, to have thing, I told you earlier that we got, uh, or I always carry extra chains, at least one if not two extra sharp chains ready to go. And I found that these, uh, these are GRK fasteners uh, cases. You know, if you buy four, five, six inch GRK construction screws, they come in these heavy duty plastic cases. And I'll tell you what, you know, I was building my barn, so I ended up with a bunch of these and I save almost everything. They are absolutely fabulous for holding these. Now I'm not saying go out and buy a $30 box of screws to hold a single chain. Um, I just happen to have them, but if you, if, you need to the, if you need those construction screws anyway, they are absolutely amazing. So that's just, an, again, one of those nice to have things. Um, probably I should have put this one earlier in the lineup because this one, I just did a, a short and a long form video on this thing. Th this, this Husqvarna Combi Can is by far my favorite thing other than my actual saws, just because it's so awesome, all right? It's so versatile, it's very solid construction, holds that my actual sharpening tools right on it, the scrunch is on it, it's got a little, you know, flap cubby on the other side. You know, if, if you're on the fence about getting a combi can, I know Oregon makes one, you know, I looked at all of them, went over all of them. I, I haven't had them in my hands, but after reading all the reviews and going over everything, I, I settled on this one. I'm not kidding. It took over a month to have it shipped from Europe, uh, but it is so worth it. It comes with two spring-loaded spouts, a regular spout, two caps, and a, a strap that you can, I, I don't use the strap, but man, this thing is fan fantastic. I can't say enough about it. They should be paying me for this because I, it really is awesome. It's, I think when I ordered, it was about 75 bucks, and I'm pretty sure it's more than that now. This, this was at least two years ago when I ordered this. Fantastic. You can't go wrong. You'll be happy with it. It's amazing. Now, if you're a pro guy using big saws, it's not going to hold enough gas for you. you know, my, even my 620, my Echo 620, I can use a full tank of this guy in one day. So you'd still have to bring something else in the truck. But at least when you're out and about before lunch and then after lunch, one of these would do you. You know, it holds, uh, what, five liters of gas and two and a half liters of oil, um, which works perfect for my saw. So, I, again, if you're on the fence about it, just do it because you won't be sorry. Um, the next thing, I, I was very hesitant. I, I had actually bought a, a cant hook slash log jack uh, first, and uh, I did use it occasionally. It's nice to get your your log off the ground, which now I use a bucking rack. And I got a video on that if you want to check that out. It, a bucking rack is amazing, but this is just the tools, right? So uh, I ended up getting this steel cant hook and it is so heavy duty. That, that uh, timber, some timber tough or something like that from, I think it was tractor supplies where I got it from. It works for smaller stuff, but once you get into the 
you know, five, six, seven hundred pound plus range, that timber jack, even just trying to roll those things, I was bending that, that two piece handle. So this steel is a single piece handle. And the only reason I went and got it is because I was working on these 24 to 30 inch uh, diameter uh, hard maple or sugar maple logs that were maybe 12 to 14 feet long. Holy crap, they had to weigh 1,500 pounds. And I tried using that timber tough log jack as a, a, uh, a cant hook, which it's made to do that as well. And it, the handle was just bending. So, you know, we quit for lunch. I went up to the, the local Ace Hardware, which is a steel dealer, and I got this guy and wow. Now, if you don't know the difference, a cant hook versus a, uh, a PV, uh, a cant hook has like a little foot here, a little paw, all right? And then a PV will have a spike, all right? So PVs are meant to kind of dig into either the ground and then push over, or if you're, you know, most people aren't anymore, but if you're logging on the water, you can stab and push, you know, whereas the cant hooks, I went with the cant hook because I want to just be able to latch onto a log and roll it, right? Well, it'd be more this way. You, you latch into it and then it crimps down. This paw up here, when you're, going this way will actually bite into the bark. Whereas the, if you're rolling down on a log, that pick is sticking straight out and it kind of hits the side, depending on the size of the, the log. So I went with the cant hook and the, the steel actually makes an attachment to go onto the bottom here to turn it into a log jack. So you can literally grab onto your log and then roll it up onto the stand so that your logs off the ground and you can cut uh, without putting your chain in the dirt uh, which you know that's the quickest way if you know if you didn't know that that's the quickest way to dull your blade all right so next up are axes um, honestly I don't use them much or need them very often uh, I, I kind of collect them but more of nostalgia than anything else right they're, to me they're just super cool old school plum brand like that's a plum two bit um, I just think they look cool. I probably should just hang them on the wall, but every now and then I find a use, and, and I'm talking full length axes, full size axes, not the shorter one like over there. Um, you know, like last summer I was digging out this huge elm stump and it's got these massive roots. My tractor can't even pull it out. So I'm digging around, digging around. I still can't pull it out with the tractor and I'm not sticking my chainsaw in there. So, uh, you know, the way I see it, $25 chain and it's going to be dull instantly or I can whale away with an axe and sharpen it once when I'm done you know so I'll get a bigger axe and I did that last summer so they have their place I don't need them often and honestly they're just cool and manly so yeah we got a couple axes all right next up we got log tongs all right now this is again one of those things that the average homesteader or uh, you know wood burner probably won't need that's why it's in the nice to have pile um, I actually bought these the same time I bought the, the big cant, uh, cant hook because of those huge logs. We were actually yanking these logs out of this monster, monster brush pile. So it was either get in there with a, a machete and a hatchet and a small chainsaw and get all the, the brush out of the way so that I could cut it and then roll these hundred pound chunks out, you know, even just 18 inch pieces, they would still weigh almost hundred pounds. They were that big around. Um, or get some tongs. So I spent a hundred bucks at tractor supply and got these log tongs and holy crap, they did the trick perfect. We hooked a, a big old, my uncle's got a big old blazer, old school military style blazer and just hooked these up with a chain, whoosh, pulled them right out. So again, nice to have if you're in that s uh, scenario, they, obviously there's smaller log tongs that would be great for an ATV, UTV or a, a pickup or whatever for smaller stuff. These are the biggest ones that Tractor Supply had at the time. You know, they're not professional, but they certainly worked for me the few, t that's actually the only time I've used them so far, uh, but now I have them and if I need them again, they're here. All right, so last up are the, not quite novelty, you know, Buck and Billy Ray, I, I watched a bunch of his episodes or his YouTube uh, videos, um, and he's, he is fantastic. And he said that these hooks, you know, are fantastic for moving firewood. And I don't know if it's just a different kind of firewood, you know, they're mostly pine of some sort out there, and maybe these hooks work. This is a Forrester brand, and this is a Husqvarna brand, 
and honestly i can't stand them to me they're a total waste of money you know you're supposed to you know bend over smack into the the end of the wood pick it up and then kind of fling it whether it's a two-handed fling or whatever and i i could this one the the handle spins on it so i tighten it up as much as i can and the handle still spins so you, you know you smack it down and then when the log torques down on it it spins in your hand like see how that went uh, total crap. This one's offset the different direction, but it's definitely th a thinner, sharper point. Still, it just, it, it doesn't work for me for what I'm doing. And then these little guys, these are Husqvarna. I, I can kind of see a purpose for these. You know, you drop down over the log, they grab, and then you pull up, right? So I could see that, but I, I just, they just don't do anything for me. And you know, I, I kind of almost feel silly that I bought them, but I thought maybe it would help the wife and I, because last summer we, we processed 95 face cord of firewood, basically two years for us, because I'm going through about 45 to 50 face a year right now. And I was thinking to myself, anything that could help save our backs and save us a little bit of time would be well worth it, right? And these, these items right here, did not they they really didn't i wouldn't waste your time or money or energy uh, looking at any sort of handheld hooks now the pickaroon or a hookaroon 100 percent definitely helps i don't use it all the time but you know moving stuff on the ground yanking stuff out of the woods to get it down to a two track or pulling stuff off a trailer yanking log uh, yanking uh, bucked up rounds off a trailer you don't have to bend over every time a, a hookaroon pickaroon definitely worth it these little guys I'm, like I said, I'm sure there's a place for it. Um, if Buck and Billy Ray says there's, it, it's awesome. I'm sure it is. I just don't have the, the right place or the right wood or whatever. Well, thanks for sticking around this long. I've got one last tool here. Uh, this is a, a moisture meter, right? It's, it's nothing special. It's nothing fancy. It's not expensive. It's like 25 bucks on Amazon. Um, and it, it, I wouldn't consider it super accurate. It's not a you know, scientific instrument. Uh, but it does help give you a good estimate on the moisture content of your firewood. Uh, you know, after you get it split, let it sit for a while, you can at least check it, or at least, you know, like standing dead. I've taken down elms that there was not, not a stitch of bark left on it, and I get down to the bottom 12, 15, 18 feet of the trunk, and get it split up and it's still wet, like 30% moisture. The top half, the top three quarters or whatever would be completely dry, like 10 to 15%, but the bottom half. So it is kind of nice to have one of these. Again, definitely not necessary. I never had one until about a year and a half ago, you know, I'm processing wood for almost a decade now. Um, and it, it's, it, you can totally do it. You know, by the way it feels, once you get to, you know, handle in the firewood a lot, you're gonna get, the, the feel for how much it weighs, what it sounds like when it clanks together, it'll become more of a hollow clank or a clack, you know, instead of a, a thud, you know, you, you'll get used to that over time. So there you have it. If you got any questions about in particulars here, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Hopefully some of the more experienced guys uh, will chime in here as well. I'd love to hear their thoughts. Uh, this is a pretty big spread and, and got to remember, this is over a decade of, you know, doing this kind of stuff. I've collected all this. It's not like I went out and bought all this overnight. Uh, that'd be, as a matter of fact, I've been through, you know, half a dozen saws, at least in the past five to seven years. Uh, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, trying out different gloves, trying out different glasses, trying which axe, trying different chains on the saw. I mean, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, there's a lot that goes into this and everybody's taste is a little bit different. You might not like Echo. I mean, you might want a Steel or a Husky or Home Light or Poland. I don't know. Um, hopefully not those latter two. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment and we'll catch you all in the next video.